Good morning. Today the lecture topic is rationale of periodontal therapy. Now, uh, what basically this lecture is about what is the rationale behind doing any kind of periodontal treatment? Why do we need to do it? So, first of all, what does periodontal therapy accomplish? If you see why we want to do periodontal treatment, what is the purpose of doing it? We want to eliminate the pain. We want to eliminate any kind of gingival inflammation. We want to eliminate gingival bleeding. We want to reduce the periodontal pocket depth. We want to stop any kind of pus formation if there is any. We want to arrest the destruction of soft tissue and the bone. We want to reduce the abnormal tooth mobility. We aim to restore the physiological gingival contour. We want to prevent the reoccurrence of the periodontal disease from happening it again and Further, more and last but not the least, we want to reduce the amount, number of tooth loss as well. Now, if you see, uh, what, uh, so how do we accomplish it basically? So, first thing is the treatment, we do periodontal treatment. So, what, uh, uh, this is a brief outline of how the periodontal treatment is carried out. Now, the first thing is, we see, this is the treatment procedures. Now, this treatment procedures can either be, uh, the local one or the systemic ones or we have the clinical results. Now uh, either we do a local uh, treatment, local treatment as in either doing a scaling and a root planing or giving uh, local drug delivery as in putting uh, some kind of a medication into the gingival sulcus or uh, the systemic uh, treatment that includes uh, giving antibiotics or any other medication systemically. Now be it a local or a systemic therapy, we elicit the we elicit what kind of tissue response, right? What kind of tissue response we get from it? We assess the epithelium, we assess the connective tissue, we assess the bone, and we assess the cementum. Similarly, the clinical results. So, what do we look at now? Either we do the local therapy. Now, this we will discuss it later. So, either uh, we will do the local treatment or we will do systemic treatment. But we aim at the following clinical results. We want that there should be elimination of gingival inflammation. We want that there should be reduction in the tooth mobility. We want that there is cessation of gingival bleeding, elimination of the pockets and infection, and uh, establishment of optimal occlusal relationships, restoration of destroyed of parental tissues, restoration of physiological gingival contour. Or this is in brief of what we just discussed, that what we want to accomplish with the help of periodontal treatment. Now coming on to the, the individual part, as I was telling you about the local therapy and the systemic therapy. Now what is local therapy? Now the local therapy basically involves the removal of the plaque and all the local factors that favor its accumulation and is therefore the primary consideration in local therapy. Basically, uh, in simpler terms, local therapy is removing any kind of deposits which are present on the tooth surface and to make them disease free. Now, what kind of deposits? There will be either be a plaque formation or there will be any kind of calculus or at the same time, we also need to eliminate any abnormal forces which are acting on the tooth, which are creating occlusal relations that are not tolerable to periodontal tissues or in other words, we want to eliminate any kind of occlusal forces that are injuring the periodontium and uh, along with the removal of the plaque and the other local factors. Now we all know that removal of 100% removal of plaque is not possible. As soon as we do scaling and root planing definitely the plaque formation occurs within the next one hour. It starts within the next one hour. So to and for that, the importance of maintenance, that is the supportive periodontal therapy comes into picture. Now coming on to the systemic therapy. Now what is systemic therapy? Systemic as the name says, taking medications systemically. Now this uh, is generally indicated to uh, prevent when the disease is severe or we have any kind of oral manifestations of systemic diseases. Now, uh, chemotherapy, sorry, now coming on to uh, the systemic therapy in continuation, chemotherapy is carried out to prevent any harmful effects of the post-treatment bacteremia. Now, along with giving the systemic antibiotics, as I told, this is also done 
in uh, cases of immunocompromised cases so as to prevent any incidence of bacteremia. Now, this was about the local and the systemic therapy in brief. Now, what are the factors that affect the healing, healing of periodontal tissues after doing any kind of treatment? We have uh, the reasons for delayed wound healing as there might be any some kind of plaque accumulation, the patient might not be maintaining properly, excessive tissue manipulation during the treatment. It is always said, you know, how much we respect the tissues, the tissues respect us. So we have to be very delicate while handling the tissues. Gingiva is in itself very a fragile tissue and the more we respect it, the more likely it heals in a better way. Do we have to, uh, in case of excessive trauma to the tissues, that also might lead to delayed wound healing any kind of foreign bodies was a present. Now the foreign bodies can even be a fleck of calculus which is left behind after doing a thorough scaling and a root planing. Lack of blood supply. This is especially important when doing a surgical therapy. Now in the surgical therapy, the flap design is very important. Design when we talk about, uh, the has to be a broad base. This helps to ensure a good blood supply to the wound and thus preventing better healing, repetitive treatment procedures that disrupt the orderly cellular activity in the healing process. Now what does that mean? Now this is basically after we do any kind of a non-surgical or a surgical treatment, we need to wait for some time. We should not be in a hurry. Now why is it said that you know ideally we should wait for one to three months after doing surgery and we should not probe that area. Why? Because the collagen fibers after uh, they need uh, almost one to three months for a proper collagen formation to, f to form again after doing a surgical therapy. Failing which, there are chances that you know the newly formed collagen fibers are destroyed before being matured and thus they may actually delay the wound healing process rather than doing any good to the tissues. And the factors which promote healing or they improve the healing process are there is debridement of uh, a thorough debridement of degenerated and necrotic tissue ensures that there is a good healing happening. The immobilization of the healing area. Now, how can we achieve this immobilization? By giving sutures after doing a frontal flap surgery or for that matter any mucogentival surgical procedure as well. And then pressure on the wound. They should uh, be uh, noted that you know there should be has an there has to be an adequate pressure on the wound. There should not be any excessive pressure neither. Uh, less pressure. Now coming on to the systemic factors. Now what are the systemic factors which may Im uh, involve the wound healing process? First is the age. Age uh, definitely as the uh, person ages the healing activity the ability of the body to heal decreases. Then the patients with generalized infections especially the immunocompromised cases diabetes or any kind of other systemic infection the body's immune process is already weakened and the same and for that matter, even oral cavity is a part of the body and therefore the healing process in the uh, oral cavity also slows down. And coming on to insufficient diet, definitely the, uh, deficiency of vitamin C and deficiency of nutrients and proteins delay the healing process. Then hormonal effects. Now, systemic, if the patient is on orally administered or systemically administered glucocorticoids, definitely the steroids hinder the repair. Now, how do they hinder the repair? They hinder the repair by inhibiting the growth of fibroblasts, by production of collagen, or by formation of endothelial cells. And then definitely systemic stress. Stress reduces, is not good for the body. Definitely it reduces or uh, slows the healing process. And the patients who are on hormones or who have undergone uh, surgical procedures like thyroidectomy etc. Now what are the factors that promote healing? Progesterone is a hormone that increases the healing process in the following way. It, it accelerates the vascularization of immature granulation tissue and it appears to increase the susceptibility of the gingiva to the mechanical injury by causing dilation by dilating d marginal vessels. Now coming on to healing, this was about the generalized healing. Now coming on to healing especially after periodontal therapy. Now the basic concept of healing are the same uh, following all forms of periodontal therapy be it a non-surgical one or the surgical one and it consists of the removal of the degenerated tissue debris and the replacement of tissues destroyed by diseases. Now coming on to the basic terms, what do we mean by regeneration, repair and reattachment and new attachment. Now regeneration as the name suggests, regenerate. It is a natural renewal of a structure which is produced by growth and differentiation of new cells and intercellular substances to form new tissues or parts. 
it basically takes place by growth from the same type of tissues that has been destroyed by its precursor. Now, when you talk about the regeneration, it's the parodontium or the gingival epithelium, and this is the epithelium and the underlying connective tissue. For example, if it is destroyed, if the pedontal ligament is destroyed, it should be uh, regenerated by pedontal ligament. And if the epithelium is destroyed, then it has to be replaced by epithelium itself. And when you talk about the heart tissue regeneration, the bone and the cementum and the existing, uh, this bone or the cementum regeneration happens with the help of connective tissue because it contains precursors of both bone and cementum. And they contain undifferentiated connective tissue cells that stimulate osteoblasts and cementoblasts to lay down new bone and cementum. Now, regeneration of periodontium is a continuous process. It is an ongoing process during destructive periodontal disease. It's always said that periodontal disease always occurs in phases of exacerbation and remission. Quiescence, so that is, in sometimes the uh, in some sometimes the periodontal ligament you know it it goes in the sleeping mode the no ongoing destruction process is stopped and the regeneration starts happening and in some phases it uh, the degeneration starts and the regeneration stops now coming on to repair now repair is the process in which the healing occurs by scar formation it restores the continuity of the diseased periodontium and re-establishes the normal gingival sulcus at the same level as it was at the pre-existing periodontal pocket. However, it is not, uh, you can say, it is not uh, replaced by the old structure which was present. It will be replaced by scar formation. Now, coming on to new attachment. Now, new attachment basically is embedding of new periodontal ligament fibers into new cementum and the attachment of the gingival epithelium to the tooth surface previously denuded by the disease. Now, previously, uh, a term was used as reattachment since it refers to the restoration of marginal periodontium by existing fibers. However, reattachment is currently used only to refer to repair in areas of the root which is not previously exposed to the pocket such as after surgical detachment of tissues or following traumatic tears in the factors or the treatment of periodontal diseases epithelial adaptation now epithelial adaptation is basically a close apposition of the gingival epithelium to the tooth surface with no gain in height of the gingival fiber attachment this is uh, a, a diagram which explains the pocket probing depth. This is, you know, this is an active pocket which is full of de debris. This is an inactive pocket and this is a healed pocket. Now, this healing has occurred by long junctional epithelium. So, in either case, either there will be a reduced periodontium and a healthy gingival sulcus or there will be healing by the long junctional epithelium or the periodontium will be completely restored by regeneration. Thank you.